Let's go to Midran now, where members of the media and observers have been ordered out of the chamber of the Pan-African Parliament ahead of the presentation of the Audit and Public Accounts Report. Some MPs objected but were overruled by President Raja Nkondodang. And uh, for more on this, we crossed our report into Kwana Gatana. She's been following things for us at the uh, Pan-African Parliament. Kwana, good afternoon to you. It's certainly been a rather interesting time at uh, the Parliament. And uh, the issue of accountability seems to be the hot topic there. What's been happening today? Well, it has been an interesting time at this session of the Pan-African Parliament, Natata. And behind me here, as you can see, the doors to the entrance of the chamber of the Pan-African Parliament are slammed shut. While behind those doors, the members of parliament from 55 African countries are discussing the audit and public accounts report of this parliament. And that is the report for the past three years. Now, among issues that have been concerning and these come out of a whistleblower's document that was circulated to members of parliament here is issues of trips that are undertaken by the president of the parliament, Rojan Kododang, and some of the people that are called his lieutenants, but also the issue of contributions by member countries, including South Africa, that contributes this very venue, the Gallagher estate, that contributes a house that we understand the president has not been able to take up because he said is perhaps it's not up to standard. I know that the Finance Committee of the Parliament discussed this issue, but we understand that he lives currently in a house that costs about 80,000 rand a month. These are just some of the issues. Now, this particular seating or this particular report is supposed to detail some of those issues, but before it was presented, the President announced that uh, it would be a closed session. Now, let's look at the exchange that happened uh, before the media were asked to leave the room. I am very, very concerned by that decision by the Bureau to conduct uh, the affairs of this House in an opaque way. We are here on account of public funds, and the public should see that whatever we do, whatever decisions we make, we make them in a transparent way. And I don't see why we should keep off our business from the public. Whether there is any problem or there is no problem, the public should know what we are doing so that they see that we are working in an accountable way, in a way that is free and fair and it is not opaque. No way in this rule does it say that you could prescribe to this assembly whether to have a meeting in closed or not. So I ask the question, which rule did the Bureau use to decide that this is a closed session and what is the reasoning behind it? I think that we are entitled to an explanation. Clearly said, it is a public debate. The deliberations of the Parliament are public at, unless the Bureau decides otherwise. And the Bureau did decide otherwise. Why are you just partially reading our rules of procedure? This is not good. The law is dynamic. We have laws and you have the text, you have the Article 17 that you refer to, but just go through it totally. It is a decision by the Bureau. You are talking about public funds. What interpretation are you referring to? What goes out is what exactly what is decided here. I don't know. So, either we implement uh, the uh, rules or not. So, the Bureau decided to have this uh, as a, in a closed session. Well, let's do so. So, despite those uh, exchanges and those uh, um, objections to, to uh, a closed session in Tequana, uh, members of the media are now standing outside. Absolutely, Natasha. Members of the media and observers are now outside. And some members of this parliament are still questioning uh, the decision made by the president. And some of them are saying that, in fact, they don't feel that it was a decision made by the president, by the bureau, as he says, but a decision made by the president. Because even yesterday, when the activity report of the parliament was presented, some members of this parliament were saying that, in fact, he shouldn't be calling it an activity report because it does not show the outcomes, but it shows his diary. 
country. In fact, what he did, among the things that he did was to go to about 31 countries within a period of three months. And some members are questioning whether that was business of the parliament or whether it was, in fact, campaigning for the re-election that he has now experienced here at this parliament. Natasha? All right, and Takwana, I understand also uh, that uh, the Palestine issue uh, came up there. Is that right, what was discussed? Well, yesterday, when the parliament went about its business, some members, including South African MPs, were concerned, and members from Egypt also were concerned, that the parliament was not saying anything about the events in Palestine. So they requested the parliament to take out time to discuss that issue. In fact, they were demanding that the parliament pass a motion to condemn the killings in Palestine. But uh, the president then said that the rule of this parliament says that a motion has to be tabled three days before it is presented in parliament for debate but the members were saying how would we know three days ago that people would be killed in palestine so today uh, yesterday he said that the motion would, would be discussed today this morning when the members came and members of the media also were expecting that motion to be tabled and debated in this house he then again announced that uh, the decision had been made that that motion would be discussed tomorrow this is another issue that has got some members of this parliament unhappy because because they're saying that it seems the president, in fact, makes decisions unilaterally. Natasha? Yeah, we've definitely seen that way. And Tukwana, thanks so much for that update on Tukwana Gatani live for us uh, from Midrand at the Pan-African Parliament.